All right, take your psalm book 162. <clears throat> the only true happiness comes from the Lord, that's for sure. 162, let's stand and let's sing out to God be the glory, great things He hath done. Just praise the Lord. Just sing to Him and testify a little bit. And we look forward to it. Let's pray. And we'll continue on with the service. And after we pray, if you will be seated, the young people have another song that they'll sing tonight. I'd like to ask Brother Wilson, if you will, open us up in prayer as we get started.
Take your psalm book again, and if you will, stand. And I want to sing this song, Since I Have Been Redeemed. Since I Have Been Redeemed, page 229. Let's all stand as we sing this song on that first verse. I have a song I love to sing. Amen. Since I have been redeemed. Ready? I have a song I sing since I have been redeemed of my Redeemer Savior King since I have been second verse i have a christ that satisfies amen and i'm satisfied tonight sing it with me i have a christ that satisfies since i have been redeemed to do his will my highest price since i have been redeemed since i Good to have everyone here tonight. Looking forward to all the things that will take place. And uh, tonight is just kind of a, a youth night here. We've got uh, several songs and testimonies and different things that we'll be doing tonight. And so we're, we're excited about it. Like teaching the young people, it's a joy to serve Jesus. And because it truly is. I don't have to put on a show tonight. I don't have to make something up. But it's genuine. It comes from the heart. And so we want to teach them that. So we're looking forward to tonight. There's just a few announcements. Uh, took quite a bit of time this morning, and uh, let me just quickly go over the announcements. I do need to mention these prayer requests uh, tonight. If you would remember, pray for Miss Judy as she's in the hospital this evening. Pray that she would recover quickly and, uh, and get all this fluid drained off of her and she can get back home. I know that that would be a blessing. Pray for Miss Donna Beeman as she had a little bit of a rough week this week and needs our prayers. And then I mentioned... We pray for the Montgomery family, Edward Montgomery family. He passed away. They had a service today. This is the brother of my neighbor, and um, I know that they appreciate those prayers very much. Well, uh, today is Harvest Sunday, and we praise the Lord for the good morning service. And uh, thank you, thank you, thank you for all those that have worked and invested uh, to get folks to church this week. And uh, the Lord's been blessing it each and every week for the last month. We're steadily having uh, visitors every week, and the attendance is a little bit more each week. And uh, the Lord just met with us in a great way this morning. And to uh, thank you for all those that have, that have put forth that effort. It's a blessing. Now, this week, we'll have the Ladies' Fellowship on Saturday at 11 o'clock, and it'll go till about 2 o'clock. So with that being said, we still will have our... Saturday morning soul winning, but I understand it'll probably be a little bit, uh, a little bit cut back because of the ladies obviously not being here for that. Uh, but uh, you be here Saturday, and I look forward to that. Next Sunday, God and Country Sunday, and uh, we want to just uh, pray for our country next week. 
burden for it. We need the Lord. Amen. We need revival. We'll have a patriotic service, missionary next Sunday night, then Easter in a couple weeks, and we won't mention all that. I think we know what's going on there, but let's be in our places for that. Uh, let's get right to our scripture verses tonight. So if the young people have a memory verse, let's go ahead and come on up. <clears throat> or did we get caught off guard tonight? Who's got a verse? Anybody? Dalen. All right. I was giving out $20 tonight for each Bible verse. Anybody else? We'll think of one real quick, won't we? All right, good. I'm glad we have one tonight. This will be great. Sir? All right, very good. Thank you, Dalen. Appreciate that. That is awesome. Well, it's good to have several uh, guests tonight. And I introduced my sister and their family this morning. From Virginia, they were here for the weekend, uh, but tonight got more family in, and thankful for that. Got my brother Nathan and his wife Becca, and uh, you pray for them. They're having trouble. He's sitting back there. She's up here tonight, <laughs> so I'm not sure what's going on there. But uh, then my dad, of course, uh, no dad. Good to have the Humphreys uh, with us tonight, and um, I think. Uh, Becca, is your birthday this week? We've got to sing happy birthday to Becca. Tuesday. We had uh, Kara's birthday was today. We sang to her. And the uh, Peebler's anniversary was today. Derek had a birthday. So exciting day. All right, let's sing. Happy birthday. Here we go. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, God bless you. Happy birthday to you. Amen. And uh, we don't ask the ladies how old they are. Amen. We are smarter than that. Well, tonight I want you to um, uh, just enjoy the music, the singing. We're going to sing another congregational song here. Uh, but we're going to have some testimonies. And I don't know... I really don't know how the Lord's going to lead tonight. I've got a bunch of stuff scribbled down that we practiced and plan to do, but I like to have a service where you just say, okay, Lord, uh, I want you to do it tonight. And there's nothing wrong with having an order of service. I like to be organized. But sometimes you just want to throw all that away and say, okay, we just want to come tonight and to worship the Lord and sing to Him. And uh, we, I don't know, we may have testimonies, we may have preaching, uh, I know we've got uh, several folks ready to preach, even a lady or two ready to preach tonight. I won't mention any names, but uh, we'll just see what the Lord does. Now, if a lady starts preaching, the Lord's not in that, amen? Not in that, okay. So just, just to get that clear, uh, they can only preach at home, not at the church. Um, so anyway, uh, let's sing this song. Um, Hayden, can you come on up, uh, play your violin for this? And uh, we were singing this at home, Just a Closer Walk with Thee. I don't know that number. 317. Let's turn our songbook. 319. And uh, Just a Closer Walk with Thee. That's what we need. Walk with the Lord. Amen. And so let's sing a few of these verses together. 319. Just a Closer Walk with Thee.
song. We're going to take up our offering tonight. We've got a special offertory. So, fellas, why don't you come? And my ushers, boys, go ahead and come on up. I think Dawson and Caleb. And um, appreciate your faithfulness. The Lord's good to us here, and we are faithful in our giving back to Him. So they're going to come and play a song for you here for the offering. Let's have a word of prayer. And, um, Caleb, can you ask the Lord to bless the offering tonight? Today we have uh, focusing on the harvest, harvest, and uh, my heart was stirred this morning through the teaching and preaching, just about uh, focusing on our efforts to get the gospel out, amen, and you never know where that seed's going to fall, now, I won't preach again what I preached this morning, but we're so focused on the types of soil out there, thinking, ah, that person is stony ground. That person is thorny ground. They're not going to listen. Boy, it'd be easy, listen, if everybody would just call up the church phone number and say, what must I do to be saved? Right? That'd be easy. It doesn't work that way. Hardly ever. It does sometimes. Hardly ever. We've got to be faithful about just getting the seed out. Yes, some will fall on stony ground, sure. Some will fall on uh, by the wayside, but we never know when that seed will fall on the good ground. And we praise the Lord for His salvation. And so tonight we are um, going to kind of focus on testimonies a little bit tonight. We've got a few testimonies we'll share. And uh, you think about your testimony. Everybody ought to have a testimony. We were sharing testimonies in the house this afternoon, just a, just a few of us. And have a testimony that you can share. You never know what it'll do for somebody else. But what I'd like to do right now is uh, let's have a special song by Kinsey. She's going to sing. And I love this song, a great song in, in our testimony to the Lord. And uh, this song says, Here am I, Lord, send me. And I hope that that is our prayer. Whatever God wants us to do, that we'll just be used. And so you listen as Kinsey sings this song. It'll be a blessing to you. Here am I, send me.
I couldn't help but think as I sat there. Some of you adults wished you could have sang that song as a teenager. Can't go back, can you? We can say from here on out. I remember, and I'm, this is part of my testimony in a moment, but I remember when I was about 15, promising the Lord. I didn't sing that like you sang it, but I said, Lord, I promise you, I will serve you faithfully. I promise you I'll always stay in church. I made that promise in Christian school chapel service. And uh, with the Lord's help, and that's all it is right there, the Lord's help is not for the grace of God. Where I be? I've had many opportunities to mess up my life along the way. And I could have easily. If I would have just had one weak moment, the devil would get me. And uh, I love the song the young people said, I choose to be a Christian. And that's a choice you have to make. What's the choice? Pick up your cross. Deny yourself. Follow me. Oh, just being saved doesn't make you a Christian. There's a choice. There's a choice. And, uh, Kenzie, how old are you? 13? I hope you meant that, what you're saying. That's a great song, great testimony. Well, let's see here. I'd like to ask Dylan if you would come. And Dylan is going to share some thoughts with us that the Lord has given him. And I want you to listen to Dylan and uh, proud of him. It's not easy to stand up and share some things from your heart, and, but I believe that you'll be blessed for it. You listen to the Lord as Dylan talks to you. Now, just to clarify, this is my first time, <laughs> and my mom told me, that I'm just trying to be a vessel for the Holy Spirit, so if I mess up or say something wrong, it's not my fault. <laughs> I'm going to preach on the topic, answer the phone. And so I'd like everybody to turn their Bibles to 1 Samuel chapter 3. And we're going to read a few verses there. 1 Samuel chapter 3. Now we're going to read verse 1 to 10. And the child Samuel ministered unto the Lord before Eli, and the word of the Lord was precious in those days. There was no open vision. And it came to pass at that time when Eli was laid down in his place, and his eyes began to wax dim, he could not see. And ere the lamp of God went out in the temple of the Lord, where the ark of God was, and Samuel laid down to sleep. That the Lord called Samuel, and he answered, Here am I. And he ran unto Eli, and said, Here am I, for thou calledst me. And he said, I called not, lie down again. And he went. And, and the Lord called yet again Samuel. Samuel arose and went to Eli, and said, Here am I, for thou didst call me. And he answered, I called not, my son, lie down again. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord, Neither was the word of the Lord yet revealed unto him. And the Lord called Samuel again the third time. And he arose and went to Eli and said, Here am I, for thou didst call me. And Eli perceived that the Lord had called the child. Therefore Eli said unto Samuel, Go lie down, and if it shall be, he call thee. For thou shalt say, Speak, Lord, for thy servant heareth. So Samuel went and lay down in his place, and the Lord came and stood and called, as at the other times, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel answered, Speak, for thy servant heareth. I want to preach on the subject tonight, answer the phone. Samuel is a great example to us that when God speaks, we should listen and answer when he calls. God desires to talk with you as his child, and he wants you to fellowship with him. He wants you to walk with him, and he wants you to be close to him, so you know what he wants you to do. He wants you to follow him with your life. Sometimes some people will get far away from God, and so God is like, I want to get you a little bit closer to me. And so he sends us trials, battles, and struggles, but in the end, it all works together to make us stronger as a Christian 
and bring us closer to him. Also, praying and reading your Bible will give you some knowledge to avoid those trials. Just like a parent will tell their child, don't touch that burner, it's hot. If the child does, it's going to get a stinging consequence pretty quickly. The parent says to a child, put away the toys, and the child doesn't, they should probably be punished. No, not probably, they should. I'm sorry, I messed up my notes. <laughs> like I said, it's not my fault. <laughs> But don't get me wrong here, God doesn't want to punish his children. He wants to bless them and God because God loves his children. So if you do his will, he will bless you and he will provide for you. And you do have a purpose. Um, um sorry. So what's your purpose? What is your calling? Whether a pastor, youth pastor, junior church worker, um, Sunday school teacher, pastor's wife, youth pastor's wife, bus driver, bus worker, or part of the maintenance group. God wants you to answer that calling, be that, and then I repeated what I just said last time. God doesn't care what you look like, sound like, act like, but you should act like a Christian. Whoever, wherever, whenever, God wants you to answer that calling. Also, your church has some place for you to help, no matter how big or small it is. And God might call you just to be a good, solid, faithful Christian. Trust me, we still need those. Jump in, get involved in your local church, and I don't mean Catholic or Muslim, I mean an independent, fundamental, Bible-believing, soul-winning, devil-hating, old-fashioned Baptist Amen. church with a good, KJ-believing, and preaching pastor. Um, whenever, wherever, whoever, answer God's call and follow it to the T. Just as if you'd answered a phone, answer the call and God will bless you. That's where I got my message shot from, by the way. I can't stress how important it is to do God's will for your life. If you don't, there have been countless examples of good, solid Christians who have gotten out of God's will for their life and have gone astray. But God still loves them and tries to bring them back, and some do come back and started following him again. I'm going to use an illustration that I, that I heard at camp. So, this one of the camp leaders, he went trout fishing once. And so, trout are very smart fish. So, you take the bait and you cover the entire hook so they don't see the hook. Um, but then whenever they'll catch it, they say, okay, so just let the line run. And while they're doing that, they're swallowing it. It's getting deeper and deeper until finally it's in their stomach. Catch them. And like you said, that's the devil putting the bait on the hook. Amen. And some will take it, and they'll go away and start swallowing it. And so he said that whenever you catch it, there are very, very few that you can throw back that are alive still. Sometimes people think that the devil goes out of the after the world, but he's already got them. He wants the good, solid Christians who've given their lives to God, just like the trout, who are doing his work, who are soul winning, helping out in their church because they've devoted their lives to God. He uses their weaknesses and tries to stop what they're doing for God. The devil has power, yes, but God has 10 billion times the power Amen. he has. He can overtake you, but with God's help, he can't harm you. So put on the armor of God and, quoting a verse, be ye separate. I've heard some preachers say, we are in the world, but not of the world. God put us here to do one simple task, that is to tell the gospel to all the world. You have no idea what a single track can do. Some pastors have found tracks and gotten saved, and since then have led dozens, hundreds, and some even thousands to the Lord. The power of one single track is infinite. You don't even have to talk to them directly. Just putting them in a paper towel holder or by a soap dispenser, you can help save someone's life. I, I, if someone found a track and told two of their friends, and those two friends told two of their friends, for long we would have a Christian nation, continent, even a world loving God again. The power of one single track very well could turn our world around. So carry tracks in your pockets, in your car. Know the Romans road and put it to use. Love people to Christ and Christ will surely Keep blessings on your life. The power and value of a single paper track could put someone on the golden streets of heaven Amen. rather than in the deep, dark, fiery pits of hell. Amen. So you could be that one. So go out, reach out, and attempt to help save someone's life. God will bless you for it. Only God knows, but you might see them someday. Also, don't go live like the devil during the week and walk into church and say, well, God's been good. Don't get me wrong, that is good. But don't be a hypocrite because before long, you won't come to church at all. That's another reason we should train up the next generation. You're doing something right because I'm up here. Most, most of you were in or are in some form of church youth group, and now some of you older folks can look back and look on how you've tried to live a good, godly Christian life. 
So thank you for, to the elderly folks for being role models for the next generation. Also, the average lifespan is 70 years, so if you're living past that, it's a blessing straight from heaven. If you're not saved, you're not guaranteed tomorrow. So get saved, answer the phone, and don't let it ring out. If you are saved, answer the phone, and let's get busy serving the Lord. Amen. You know, that's not just a, a cute little catchphrase for the children. I mean, let's be honest. How many times have we not answered the phone? God spoke to my heart, and I said, nah, not today. And so, appreciate that, Bill, and thank you for sharing with us what the Lord gave you. He uh, wrote that, and of course, I looked over it and make sure it was all in line, and it was. Very good. Appreciate that. Uh, let me ask you tonight, are you thankful for a testimony? Are you thankful when I say testimony, I'm talking about the day that the Lord saved you? I mean, listen, we say this so much, but it'll do something for us here on Harvest Sunday. It'll give us a burden for the lost. If we can realize the testimony we have is special, it really is. Just, just to be born here in America, to be given the opportunity really to go to church in freedom and not have to hide. You know, young people understand people are hiding today trying to go to church. They don't have the freedom. I'm thankful for my testimony. And I wonder tonight if somebody would just quickly maybe 15, 30 seconds, give us your testimony. How old were you? Maybe where were you? And um, what maybe a, a particular instance that God used in your life. And uh, just want to give an opportunity tonight. We're going to share some more testimonies here. But anybody quickly say, I'd like to share mine. Yes, ma'am. Amen. Praise the Lord. Somebody else say, hey, here's when the Lord saved me. Roger? Amen.
Amen. Amen. That's awesome. I wish I had a time and date. I, I didn't write it down. I wish I did. But I know this, even though I don't know the time. Brother Gary, I don't know the date. I know the day it happened. Because there was a change that took place in my heart. I went down with a heavy heart. Weight of the world on my shoulders. But when I stood up as an 11-year-old boy, something was different. And I knew that I knew. That's a blessing. Dylan. Amen. Remember that. Cameron, why don't you come? I asked Cameron if he would. This is my nephew, and I asked him if he would share his testimony tonight. He's got a unique testimony. I think it's good to hear and beneficial, and can maybe be a help to somebody tonight. First off, I want to say thank you, Uncle Tim, for allowing me to share my testimony. I've always grew up in church. Very thankful for my Christian heritage. I made a profession of salvation. I do remember when it happened. Um, I was in Florida. But years later, I struggled with that doubt for you. I remember last year, um, revival. I just heard somebody actually close to me share a testimony how they struggled with doubt for years. God brought heavy conviction of realizing that I have not. October the 24th, while I was on vacation. Pigeon Forge, Tennessee. I put my faith and trust in Jesus Christ as my personal Savior. I can tell you um, after that that my life is never. There's a peace and Amen. joy and love that got baptized last weekend in ice cold water. But no, that's my testimony. Amen. Amen. I've, I've made this statement. I think we've put it out on the church sign before. Uh, eternity is too long to be wrong. If, you're, if you have doubts about your salvation, it is not worth struggling with. Not worth struggling. And uh, the devil will use that against you. He'll put pride in there. And he'll cause you to keep from getting it settled. And, uh, and, and listen, if you've got it settled, don't be ashamed about it. Let folks know, hey, I was struggling, but I got it nailed down. And they'll rejoice with you. Appreciate, uh, appreciate that testimony. Anybody else? You just have something on your heart. I don't want to push it, but I want to give an opportunity to be share what the Lord did for you. I'm going to ask my dad to come, and I want you to hear his testimony. I know uh, probably you, you've heard part of it. I've referenced it a few times as it goes along with my heritage. But I, I've asked him to come, and on purpose, I want us to think about the importance of, of one person. Today, we emphasized each one reach one. And you never know who that might be and the, the far-reaching influence that you may have. And uh, I, for sure, am not trying to lift any one person up tonight. But I want you to understand that God can use one. We celebrated my parents' 50th anniversary this week, and, and he might share this, but I was able to get in touch with Pastor Bodwell that led my mom and dad to the Lord back in 1977, and he showed up as a surprise to the anniversary party, and they, they've been in touch often throughout the years, but who would have thought years ago that one, one encounter there but nonetheless, uh, Dad, won't you come take a few minutes, and I want you to share your testimony.
10 of my grandkids were up here singing tonight. I didn't have a heritage where I knew Christian grandparents. My grandparents loved me, I'm sure. I didn't have that. I believe my mother was a Christian, but she married an unsaved man. They met during World War II. She was in the Navy waves, and Dad was in the Army Air Force. She was an Oklahoma farm girl, dairy farm. My dad was an Illinois farm boy. And she married an unsaved man, but I believe that she probably knew the Lord back then. Not, not any one time did we ever have a meal that my mother didn't pray for the meal. Uh, my mother prayed with us kids at night at bed. But uh, the clear gospel wasn't presented. I was raised by an unsaved man, a hardworking, honest guy. If it was right, it was right. If it was wrong, it was wrong. It didn't matter who liked it. My brother and I had that in, in us. And some of you older folks for sure have that. It doesn't matter. You're not trying to make people mad, but if it's true, it's true. If it's not, it's not. Uh, so that's how I was raised. Uh, Jesus Christ uh, was a swear word. Sad. I wish that I could, I wish I had the notes from my great-grandfather, J.R. Laughlin. Uh, his father is the one that came up in 1832 from Fayette County, Kentucky, Lexington. The farm's been in the family ever since, 1832. The ground that my brother still and I have has been in the family since 1841. I wish, even when I was growing up, that I could have visited more with my grandmother and grandfather Miller. I'll be gone one of these days, and I won't have any influence except whatever I left. And you won't have any opportunity to ask me any questions. Uh, you all can listen in as I talk to the kids and you too, but I wasn't raised like you've been raised if you've been raised in a Christian home. But I was raised by a loving mother that I'm going to see again. Amen. I'd give anything to be able to hug her. I saw Christy shedding tears over the first message I wrote the note in my Bible before you preached it. This country's going to need, need people like you like never before. I hear about older pastors that are retiring. They want to retire, but they don't have anybody to fill the pulpit. And uh, you better get your eyes off materialism because it doesn't make you happy. Uh, I, uh, I'm going to live the way I live no matter how I've been blessed. I, I, can, I can drive whatever I want. It doesn't make me better than anybody else. No. Uh, that's not in my notes, but Dylan got me fired up. I can't say anything better than what he said. But I want you to know, you don't need to experience what I experienced the first 25 years of my life to know it's wrong and bad. Um, March the 4th, 1972, I married probably the most beautiful girl in Quincy, Illinois. My wife, Terry, your grandma. We were married at St. Peter's Catholic Church in Quincy, Illinois. Our honeymoon consisted of a motel room at the Holiday Inn in Keokuk, Iowa. That's all I could afford. I've been marketing cable TV <clears throat> with an outfit, and I've been working out east. Won't go into all of it. Uh, but before long, it was obvious we needed to go back to Quincy. We need to go back home. We need to go back home. We need to get away from where we were at and go back home. <clears throat> and after we got back home, we lived in the basement of my wife's parents' house. And next door was the new car manager for Rod Smith Chevrolet in Quincy. And Buford gave me a job. I worked four and a half years on straight commission. No paycheck, no nothing. Straight commission, four and a half years. I was a hardworking Illinois farm boy. I wasn't saved, but I knew how to work. And I made a living and I paid the bills. Um, but the most important thing that happened during this time, one of the most important things, there's many important things, we were married on March 4th. What year? 72. I had a buddy that I grew up with down the road from me, and his folks ran a dairy farm. They, they were tenants for it. His name was Marshall Brown. They'd moved to Payson. Uh, and he was the best man at our wedding. And I'd stayed in contact with him, and 
And we're going to go over to his house for a barbecue in May. We don't been married just a little bit. I got a phone call from Marshall said, don't come. Cheryl was lighting the barbecue grill. And she's doing gasoline all over herself. She's burnt terribly. Going to the hospital. My, my, my. Marshall was. Cheryl was, wasn't living for the Lord. She got away from the Lord. She married an unsaved guy. So went to the hospital. He burnt terribly. Burnt terribly. There's some friends of mine. You know Jim Hoskins? Jim and Linda Hoskins were a young couple that were kind of friends of Marshall and Cheryl's. Here's what they did. That, it wasn't a gospel tract. It was a King James Bible. I thanked them many times. They went to the hospital and they took a Bible up and they gave it to Marshall and said, Marshall, I want to give you this Bible. Might be a help to you. And he started looking for God. And he found him. But he didn't find him right away. Cheryl was in that burn unit, I don't know how many weeks. <sighs> my, my, my. What Jim and Linda did was amazing. Well, over the next few years, my wife and I's life started falling apart. I don't tell anybody about the next three or four years. We don't talk about it. It's terrible. It's terrible. But uh, I had this beautiful little girl named Michelle. I used to take her out on my boat. She'd tell the other ones out there, this is my daddy. This is my daddy. And uh, she was everything to me. What a bright spot in a dark world of mine. <clears throat> I just started drinking in the earlier years when I met this kid that was raised in a Christian home. He listened to me now. He's dead. He, he told me he was a believer later when he wanted me to come work with him down south. But his older brother is 84 years old, and he goes to church with us now. Donald Harms, Nathan knows who he is. Becca knows who he is. They tried to get Daryl on the right line, but Daryl got me started drinking. I saw all the drinking that went on when I was being raised, and I didn't drink. But Daryl got me started drinking before I married Harry, and my drinking got terrible in the early 70s. Um, it was easy to get beer even underage back in those days. A very wild life ensued. I'm not proud of it. I tried to run from reality. Meanwhile, God was working on Marshall. God was working on Marshall. Marshall was, Marshall was searching. Ponytail. His wildness. I don't know if his mouth was as bad as mine or not. It's horrible. Horrible. But uh, he was working on him. Well, in the spring of 1975, there was a revival meeting at Columbus Road Baptist Church. Evangelist Jim Cook preaching a revival. John Nelson, uh, his sister, or his wife was sister of Cheryl's. And I believe they were responsible for getting Marshall and Cheryl to come to that revival meeting. Jimmy Cook in 1975. And you know what happened to Marshall? On a Tuesday night, he didn't get out of his pew and come forward, but he trusted Christ as his Savior while he sat in that pew. He got under conviction and got saved. Pastor Bodwell and the preacher said, Hey, we got to go visit that young couple. And they went over there to the house, and Marshall said, I already got it settled Tuesday night. He got saved. He got saved. Well, he worked in the lab at Quincy Soybean, which is now ADM. There wasn't much security back in those days. And I'd go over there and see him in the evening and take my beer over there. He'd, he'd ever drank on the job. And uh, so I'd go over there and visit with him. But there was something different. I came over there that night, and Marshall had a clean haircut. The bad literature was gone. He was sitting there with a New Testament. Amen. And he started trying to tell me about Jesus. 
I wasn't interested yet. But he didn't give up on me. He didn't give up on me. Never forget it. Different guy. He never gave up on me. Later that year in 76, Marshall and Cheryl got us to visit Columbus Road Baptist Church a couple of different times. I remember one time there was a picnic at a park. And so I told my wife I'd go home and get the baked beans and chug down a Budweiser before I went to the park. Me? Yeah. You don't want the scars I have, kids. You do not want the scars. The scars are going to be there till I go to heaven. That's right. I'm scarred up. And sometimes I don't have as much patience as I should because I know how bad it is. The devil's poison's terrible. Amen. It'll make you say things, do things that you would have no idea. And it's just a start. Thank God I didn't give in to the pot and the drugs. Because I could have. Because when I marketed cable TV, the guys from California did them. But I didn't go that far. And uh, so uh, things weren't getting any better. I'd stop at the tavern every night on the way home. Just about every night. My wife never knew when I was going to get home. She just had to warm the food up. You know, we didn't have cell phones or nothing. So whenever I got there, she'd warm it up one more time. Things were getting rough. Things were getting rough. So I went to work. They'd fired me from Rod Smith Chevrolet because a guy thought I was too honest, so he went and lied to the boss. The boss fired me. And I went over to Canton, Missouri, and Bud Miller hired me just like that. He had to go in for heart surgery. That was of God. So I got a job over there right away. No more nights. I ordered all the new cars trucks and bid all the trade-ins and they were just sweet people. If his wife got upset, she'd go, well, oh, heavenly day. <laughs> I was like, they might have been Christian people. Oh, heavenly day. And in January of 77, my, uh, one of the sweetest little girls in the whole world was born. That was my Melissa. I wasn't saved yet. But that's when she was born. I was working for Bud, wife. But on May the 9th, 1977, when I left for work, I told Terry, I said, call the Catholic priest. I don't know why. But I said, call the Catholic priest. We got to get some marriage counseling. And I went to work. And I got, got off five, locked the doors, got home at 5.30. I said, did you get hold of that guy? Yeah, he's real busy. He couldn't see us for weeks. In retrospect, I doubt that somebody that doesn't believe he ought to get married would know how to help me too much. You know, he might mean well. Anyway, I'm a real patient man. <laughs> no, I'm not. Like I should be. I'm working on it. And I said, I'm calling Pastor Bodwell. I was ready. <laughs> Dylan, he answered. Actually, Barb You may not know who I am. She so goes, yes, I know who I am. Just a minute, I'll go get the preacher. He was working in the backyard in his blue jeans and his moccasins on a canoe. He's off on Mondays. He came to the phone and I said, hey, this is Alan Miller. I don't know. Yeah, I know who you are. He didn't say we've been praying for you. He said, I'll come out right now if you want to. I said, oh, well, there we come. No, I don't care. Well, you can come. We weren't expecting you to come. Oh, well, if it's okay, I'm coming now. And he come in in 10 or 15 minutes in Cordova. And he came into the living room. And we visited just a little bit. And he said, Alan, before I can really help you with a marriage, you need to make your peace with God. And he said, uh, do you believe the Bible? And I said, yes, but I don't know much about it. I was raised first Christian church, disciples of Christ, really nice people, but my, my upbringing was more plus column, minus column. My good, good outweighed my bad, I was going to be okay, you know. And he didn't talk about visiting church or nothing. And, and I said, yeah. And he said, can I show you some verses in the Bible and you make up your own mind? I said, yes. And of course, he showed me familiar verses that most of us are familiar with in here. And that's the night that the lights came on. 
because that's the first time I realized why Jesus died on the cross. That was the first time I realized salvation. And the preacher said, Alan, if Jesus had been a sinner, could he have died and paid for your sins? And I said, no, he couldn't. He said, well, he was perfect. And therefore, he could die and pay for your sin. Three days later, he rose from the dead. And if you want to put your faith in him right now, in your living room right now, you can get your sins paid for. Would you like to get it settled? I said, yes, I would. 46 Hickory Grove, I got saved in the living room. And it was like the weight of the world got lifted off my yeah. shoulders. I didn't become perfect, but I was different. God cleaned up my mouth. I haven't took God's name in vain one time. Take a not filthy mouth all the time, but you better watch it if you're hanging around kids that, that are even you in slurs that are, that are abbreviations for the real cuss word. You better watch what you're watching. Amen. It wears me down. These older folks in here, you don't even have to be that old. You, you know what I'm talking about. We expose ourselves to that, we get used to it. It doesn't mean as much as it used to to be around filth. Now, if there's something I even want to watch that I think might be good, I just record it so I can fast forward through the commercials. That's not in my notes either, by the way. But... But I got saved that night. Mom made a profession. She went along with me. But then sometime later, she realized I just kind of joined the club with Alan, so to speak. That, word, that wasn't in her exact words. And John Nelson, <laughs> Cheryl's brother-in-law, helped with her after the invitation at church. She nailed it down. There's been many, many bumps in the road since then. There's many heartaches. Most of it's from the old skinned up, scarred up heart of the past. And it raises its stinking head, you know. Uh, but we're together. And we love each other more now than we ever have. And my wife will tell you, it's sweeter than it's ever been. Uh, and kids, if you have questions, ask Grandma, ask me. Anything you want to know, I can't ask anybody. They're all gone. My heritage. Uh, we sat in the living room <laughs> often anymore and cry, thinking, what if Pastor Bodwell hadn't come when I was ready? What if Jim and Linda hadn't took that Bible up there? What if Cheryl hadn't even get burnt? The things that happened that led to where we are now, it's an absolute miracle that there's kids in the ministry out of our relationship. It's an absolute miracle. And I want you to know this is history, this is truth, this isn't hype, this isn't what somebody thinks, this is firsthand stuff here. Uh, I didn't go back to the tavern. Except one time, I ordered cheeseburgers from the Lakeview Bar and Grill, which was very clean, and it wasn't where people hung out late at night and got drunk. Pastor told me, he said, don't be going back in the tavern to try to win your buddies because you're going to fall back into it if you do. not Don't go back there. That's right. And one time, one time, I ordered a cheeseburger from Lakeview, and I went in there and weren't ready, and I ordered a glass of draft beer. I took one sip, it didn't taste right? And I thought he told me right, and that was the last of it. Okay, so, so, so what I'll tell you is this. If you've been unfortunate enough to have experienced the things I'm talking about, then you have more of a hatred for it than if you haven't. But just take my word for it. You don't need to experience to have the hatred for it. You don't need, my, you don't need to experience because then you're all scarred up. So God delivered me. God still forgives me. I still have to ask Him to be merciful to me on a regular basis. 
It's not over. Who is supposed to be the smartest man in the Old Testament that wrote Proverbs? Yeah. How do you end up far away from God as you can get? Why? If the three F's are fame, females, and fortune. Man. God used to write the book of Proverbs and then he was as far away as you could get. After I got saved, and this is going to be the end of what I'm going to say, okay? within a day or two, my wife and I went in the kitchen, we dumped all the tequila and Kahlua, whiskey, wine, down the drain. And then I got a sledgehammer from the farm and I went in the basement and I took a sledgehammer to the brick bar. And I busted that sucker out. I got rid of the whole stinking thing. All the wood, everything. I got rid of all of it. I got all the booze out of the refrigerator in the basement. I got rid of all of it. It's kind of like tear, tearing down the high places. Go all the way! Amen. If, you, if you're in something, don't feel bad. Like you're worse than somebody else. There's other people that have problems too. Just get rid of it. Just get rid of it. Uh, get rid of the temptation if you can. Um, and uh, I, I've made many mistakes since I've been saved. I'll make a lot more. But there's certain things that I haven't had to deal with again because I just don't go around them. And uh, I hope maybe that'll encourage somebody here tonight. If there's anybody that's having a struggle, uh, and I hope it'll also encourage my grandkids believe me well, nobody's trying to be mean to you and, and hey folks if you see me sliding tell me tell me if you see me sliding say hey dad uh, not trying to be critical of you but not changing a little bit better be careful letting things slide a little bit better be careful things if somebody comes to you and they say I love you and I, you're starting to starting to go the wrong direction here it's hard to tell where you're going to end up. Uh, and the uh, last thing I want is any of my grandsons or granddaughters to be parents out of wedlock. And I'm going to say that now because they ain't got any of that way. It's hard to say that once it's already happened. You all know what I'm talking about, don't you? Happens all the time. So, uh, uh, real blessing to be here. I hope I didn't take too much time, preacher. In four generations, <clears throat> children can grow up with no concept of the Lord. Just in four. The first generation, if the parents don't make church a high priority for kids, that's where it starts. The second generation, the kids will grow up and make it less of a priority for their kids. The third generation, those kids grow up and make it no priority for their kids. In the fourth generation, the kids grow up with no concept of God at all. Better be careful. Teach the next generation. Thankful for my testimony. I'm going to ask my family and the ones that are going to sing this song. I want you to listen to this song, the words of this song. It's a, a song titled, My Testimony. And I thank the Lord for it. And uh, I'm going to sing this song tonight.
Well, the Lord's been good to us here on Harvest Sunday. Let's realize the importance of getting the gospel to folks. This whole world needs Jesus, amen? We're not going to elect our way out of the mess we're in, Brother Gary. We're not going to do it. We need to tell everybody we can about Jesus. And I'm thankful, thankful for my testimony. I'm not going to give my testimony tonight. I think we'll stop right here. If you would, let's bow our heads tonight. And uh, Melissa, you come. And oh, I'm sorry, I didn't see you coming. Let's uh, have a song of invitation. <clears throat> and I don't know what the Lord has spoke to you about tonight. I think perhaps uh, somebody has a decision that needs to be made. And say, I'm going to keep my life right. I'm going to give my life to the Lord. I'm going to serve Him. And uh, young people, adults alike, let's... From this day forward, amen, let's make our testimony for the Lord. Father, I pray that you bless now this invitation time. Lord, you do a work tonight. We can't do it, but you can. The old devil's real. He wants to fight us. I pray you'd impress upon each young person tonight to never go the way of the world, give their life to the Lord. Lord, each adult tonight, middle-aged adults like myself, Help us to say, I've seen enough of hurt. I've seen enough that the devil can do. I've experienced enough myself. I don't ever want to go that way again. And for the older folks to be that testimony of faithfulness to the younger generation. Lord, we ask you, you take control now. Have your will and way. In Jesus' name, amen. If you would stand, the piano will play. I believe we need to use an altar tonight. Where are you at in your life? Where's the devil been with you? <clears throat> I just believe somebody needs to make a commitment tonight and say, I'm just going to do my best to make my walk with God sweeter, amen. Make my relationship with the Lord better, stronger. I just need to thank Him for what He's done. He spared me. I don't know what your story is. You don't commit tonight, the devil's going to be at your doorstep waiting on you when you walk out of here. <clears throat> but you've got an option tonight because the Bible says if you're a child of God, greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. How about it tonight, Mama? How about it tonight? Wife, Christian lady, how we doing? Oh, listen, there's a work to be done for Christ. What about it, fella? How's your life right now? What about it, teenager? How's things going for you? Oh, I believe we ought to just go all in for the Lord. Just give it all to Him. Maybe you're doubting your salvation tonight. This is not meant to cause people to doubt. Maybe you're doubting your salvation. You ought to get it settled tonight. Walk out of here with the load lifted. Amen. I'm sure thankful for my testimony. And I'm thankful that the Lord has opened my eyes to see it's not anything except the grace of God that has me living for Him, serving Him today. It's just by God's grace. You don't have to have a testimony that says the Lord reached way down and saved me. You don't have to have that. Young people, you don't have to have that. look this way I love our church because our church is a hospital for people and uh, we've got folks in here uh, your life is all scarred up messed up but uh, you can come and know there's a place that you can go to people aren't going to look down 
Now, you know what we're going to do? We're going to help you. We're going to help you up. Bring you back to the Lord. And uh, you don't need to know my faults and failures. I don't need to know yours. Just come, give it to the Lord. And uh, now here's the thing. Don't go back to it now. When you walk out, you change. You change. Just like Jesus told that woman. She, he said, neither do I condemn thee. Go and sin no more. And that's what this church is all about. Thank you for being here tonight. Hope that you have a good week. And uh, let's pray for one another. Let's grab some gospel tracts. Let's be faithful about witnessing this week. Invite folks to church. Look forward to Wednesday night. Don't miss it. We'll be studying in John. We look forward to it. We'll pray and we'll be dismissed tonight. And it's been a good day. Brother Brent, would you again uh, lead us in prayer as we close tonight? <coughs>